கருணாமய நமாமி சின்மயம் தேவம் சத்குரும் பிரம்ம வித்வரம் வசுதேவசுதம் தேவம் கம்சானோரமர்தனம் தேவகி பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரும் தமேவ மாதா சித்தமேவ தமேவ பந்துஷ்ய சகத்தமேவ தமேவ வித்யாதிரவிடம் தமேவ தமேவ சர்வம் நமதேவ தேவ தமேவ சர்வம் குருதேவ தேவ ஹரிவோ வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸிங் ஹவு டு சக்சீட் இன் லைஃப் அண்ட் இன் த ப்ராசஸ் வி கிளாசிஃபைட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் பிகாஸ் சக்சஸ் டிபெண்ட்ஸ் அப்பான் individual in terms of what your goal is and we have number there are varieties of people and broadly we can think of at least four types one is the materialistic people who materialistic non religious people or materialistic people let's say because they they do not have faith in the in the god or or any something higher and they want the the more the better and so they look for material gains their goal is to be happy and they assume that more you have more happy so more wealth and therefore more happiness so that's how the concept of success is defined so if you are a billionaire you want to be a trillionaire and so on and people think that he has achieved because he has uh, gain what need to be done what need to be gain because that's the gain they think is most important in life money is important but money cannot buy happiness also but that's a separate issue they think the success is to to achieve something that is which other people cannot achieve a significant success therefore that which makes mark in terms of the others the society also and that we call it the number one type of people they call materialistic people who are atheists and agnostics and so on and in the in the in the vedanta they find as called dehatma bhava the one who has only notion that i am the body body includes tula shariram sushma shariram so therefore to satisfy the gross body and the mind and the intellect so pursuits are you can be a genius in 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 objective sciences and that's also a materialistic gain only because the here the material is knowledge itself so from vedanta point anything that is inert is a material but that's a subtle material you have to be classified clear understand clearly so the materialistic people that's what one category we and the second category is the materialistic religious people they are still materialistic but they believe in god that means there is belief in a, some super higher power that has to bless them with the result and in the in the in the hinduism is called karma phala data he gives the results for actions and is impartial samoham sarvabhuteshu so my action has to be appropriate then why do i need to be religious religious is because i want his help to make sure that the environment and the people that are that i depend upon also are cooperative for my success in the materialistic first category he has to work hard and be diplomatic and keep adjusting the environment conducive for him for the other guy he also does the same thing but at the same time he prays because there are certain things beyond your control therefore he prays the prayer helps or not but prayer helps his mind to be calm and quiet otherwise since you depend on something other than yourself there will be helplessness is there because you cannot change anything the circumstances are beyond your control and therefore there is helplessness and there is a frustration and that anger frustration and you may get into psychological depression because there is nothing you can do about it and you know for a for a religious person materialistic religious person he can circumvent the other problems of helplessness depression not that he he still depend on that 
and there are circumstances that he can also not change but by praying or, or repeating on something his mind become calm and quiet serene so that other avenues that he will find out in order to get around the problem so this is the advantage of being a, a materialistic religious people and we have third category religious materialistic people where the religion becomes first important because they know that in the purushartha it means in the, in the the force that a human can gain is the dharma artha kama and these are the three ingredients moksha is the fourth one we'll come back to la that later and he wants to work hard towards it but he does a dharmic way dharma comes first so he wants a wealth but not any other means but legal not only legal but morally right and that's what a religious because he believes in punyam and papam the merits and demerits even though the, he may escape the log in the local that is is doing something legal at the same time it should not be hurting others because in the process he will be gaining papam or something so the merits and demerits that are accountable and there is called dharma dharma means a moral loss and that which goes with him when he goes when he lives this life and life after that will be the beneficial for his and therefore he proceeds with the dharma and artha or kama within the means of dharma only or boundaries of dharma dharma means we give we give i should not do what i don't want others to do to me i should do only what others expect what i expect others to do to me so i, I expect others to be kind to me help me when i am in need tell me truth not steal my property all those dharmas are which are called ethical living because they are also moral also because i have to have the value for the value for value should be valuable enough for me to follow because otherwise i feel agitated my mind get disturbed and i suffer so the value becomes important for a religious materialistic person in addition to work for not only in this life he also works for the life after so there is one interesting story there was a the a, 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 a kingdom where they are tired of the king because he is becoming notorious but they still want a king so they elect a, they select a king not elect select a king who he wants and but his problem is the, he has to rule only for 20 years after that he will be sent to a forest which is a, a notorious forest with a lot of uh, elephants and tigers and all that and he is left and they select another another king and that fellow obviously with all the uh, animals ferocious animals he became a food for somebody else this has been going on so one one a very intelligent person was selected and he became a king so as he was ruling he knows his fate so what he did as a king is send the selected a, a, a architects and people who clean the forest so he you, because he was a king he sent people to clean out the forest and build the the environment for him to live comfortably there when he goes there with all the the palaces and all that and everything has been arranged so in this 20 years when he was ruling he was planning ahead for the future and when he was reading he was very happy to leave the kingdom here because he can live much better there with all the comforts there unlike the all other kings who were who were who did not have planned for it so a one who plans for the future what's going to be my next because i am born in this environment because of my past but now i have a the choice to do something that's called free will and destiny 
we'll discuss later free will and destiny but the free will the destiny is what i have and what i do with what i have is free will so these are two sides of the coin so i can do or not do or do another way kartum sakyum agartum sakyum anedha kartum sakyum that is free will means do not to do in do any other way as a human being i have the choice in fact i have to exercise the choice at all the time so therefore he plan ahead so that what planning for future is important part of the religious materialistic people where they plan not only in for this life but the life after also that means the merits of where they go to a different punya tirthas and all the religious functions and so on or any religion that you are following because in other religions you go to heaven or hell for them it is a eternal hell and eternal heaven and if you follow that religion you go to eternal heaven so uh, this may be a, 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 a joke but uh, we one uh, professor a uh, uh, thermodynamics or is a, is a, a, a scientist professor objective scientist uh, he was teaching thermodynamics so thermodynamics is the law of you know energies and all that so he gave a question he says that prove whether the hell is a hexothermic or endothermic system exothermic means heat is generated endothermic means heat is absorbed that's what the in the thermodynamics means so one fellow thought about it and wrote that hell must be an exothermic system so how do you justify it he says according to any religion if you don't follow that religion those people who don't follow follow they all go to hell only so everybody except those religious people according to that will go to hell and according to another religion these people also will go to hell because they are not following that religion so by process of mutual exclusion everybody is going to hell only and the population is increasing and therefore the, the uh, hell is getting packed up and hell is finite because there is a heaven and uh, and the earth so each limits the other therefore it is a finite space and finite space is getting packed by many jivas or many human many beings because they are all heading towards hell only and population is increasing so population in the hell also is increasing means it becomes a compact when you start putting more and more heat gets generated so he said it is exothermic system of course he must have got a grade for that so for for the eternal hell that is a problem hinduism doesn't believe in eternal hell or eternal heaven we'll can discuss later but the uh, one swami was traveling in a, in, a, in a train and one christian uh, priest was also traveling he looked at this for me and says do do you believe in christ no i don't believe in christ how about you i believe in christ and i am going to heaven but you are going to hell because you are not believing in christ i said are you sure you are going to heaven he says yes I said thank god i am going i am not going to be there where you are there because you're going to be hellish if i if you are there so hell is they believe in eternal hell or eternal heaven but what was there before you there is no life before you because somebody ate apple that's why you are born so you don't you don't have the past but you have a future so that's called semi infinite model but anyway that's a different story fact of the matter is a religious person plans ahead he believes in punyam and papam merits and demerits so depending upon the merits he will have a different higher standard life he goes to heavens where the the standard of life is better than here that's what he wants and that's what is called materialistic religious people now we call our religious materialistic people they are materialistic but religious so we have three categories completed number 1 the materialistic people and materialistic religious people and religious materialistic people in all these and in all other categories 
the factors are same number one everybody should have a goal and they and should understand what is the means to reach that goal and require discipline to proceed along with the means and in the process ready to overcome all the obstacles that arise and in his in trying to achieve that goal so all are common in every for everybody the types of obstacles depend upon the goal and the means depends upon the goal higher the goal higher the the discipline is required and also we said the the if i am devoted to the goal the goal itself will provide me the energy for me to go there so that is the nature of the goal also okay everything is nothing but ishvara only in principle so that's why krishna said yo yo yam yam tanur bhakta shraddha archita mit archati tasya tasyam salam pratam mam eva vidham yam so yo yo yam yam tanur bhakta whatever whatever whoever whoever worships him in whatever form so therefore the form can be a goal that i want to reach that's my worship that's my goal i want so in whatever way i'll bless them if he has a shraddha in that if he pursued that shraddha means the energy to even to reach that goal is also provided as a part of the system itself whether you believe in god or not you will get that boost that is required in order provided i have complete faith that i need that that alone effort is required and success will be assured one way or the other even failures become a, a stepping stone for success for that person so we have covered the the three categories the materialistic people materialist religious people and religious materialistic people and the fourth category is the religious spiritual people they is one are different from religious materialistic people where they want a tangible things for their enjoyment for their happiness everybody is looking for happiness by the by all everybody in all this that everybody wants to get something because they want to be happy with that because they think they are not happy as they are and they want to be happy so now we are looking at the fourth variety who are religious spiritual people so what is spiritual people so one who is religious person at one stage in life as they i am getting this i want some more i want some more i want some more because i got what i want but i am still feeling inadequate therefore i need some more things for me to be adequate so that i can be happy so that's why a, a millionaire wants to be a billionaire because he is not happy until i get millionaire i want to be i want that then i realize when i get i was happy all right but i need more now so therefore there is a law of economic economic law is that expenses grow to meet the income for many it exceeds the income so even if i earn more my expenses also will go more in order to meet so if i have making more money then i have a better car better house better this one all equipments better and again i have to pay it becomes expensive to live in a locality where everything is harsh and so on so forth therefore my expenses also grow to meet the income so therefore one has to be extremely careful it says one who has going after this religious materialistic people at one stage of life he has to examine he says what is the purpose of life is that all purpose of life i have enjoyed everything but still not happy completely while enjoying it's okay but i come to a stage where i need a new experience because every experience is always a problem so you know when you go first time beautiful you go to a beautiful place you experience beautiful oh it's so beautiful so thing then suddenly oh i wish my i would have brought my wife also then she would also enjoy this so you go home and then next time you plan with the wife also you go there and see the beauty there your wife is enjoying for the first time but you are enjoying the second time what happens 
Now you compare this with the previous experience. Oh, last time it was even better than this. So your mind is not enjoying anymore. Your mind is in comparing this versus that. That's true with any experience. So every experience is again, you want a new experience to it and you run out of new experiences and you become really desperate. So experience hunting people, they always will have end up of a problem because you always compare one experience with the other experience. Experience is time bound, experience is limited, space wise, time wise and all that. Therefore, you look for something which doesn't depend upon time. So that person is now called a mumutshu. Mumutshu means want something to be that, that desire where I do not have anything else I need. I have everything that I want and for that the scripture becomes a means to examine. You are going from a karma kanda now to jnana kanda. Karma kanda is do this, do this, to get that, to get that, to get that. Including swarga also, there is a methodology and in the Kata Upanishad, Nachiketa, Nachiketa uh, asks for Yama, one of the second boon is that tell me how to go to heaven, how to enjoy this. So what yajna I have to do? So the Yama teaches Nachiketa, Nachiketa doesn't want it, it's for the public only he is asking that question. Yama teaches Nachiketas and he was so happy with Nachiketas, he calls that is Nachiketa Yajna, the name also is given, Nachiketas name is provided for that Yajna. And you have to do not only Yajna, you have to do some meditation in order to get a, that higher Lokas you want to go. But anyway, so one can do that Karma Yoga, Karma Yoga is, is in the Vedas, it's not only you have to study it, but you have to do something as per the instructions and you have to follow to the letter what the instruction is and therefore there are you have to follow what the power of it says you put the ghee this way you put that way all those do's and don'ts all that is being prescribed by the priest who knows the the yajna and that yajna has to be performed and there is a before that you make a sankalpam I am doing this yajna for this sake. So you provide, why are you doing and try to get that in order to do. I should have the faith in doing it. So people say I did it but I didn't get effect. I means you don't have the shraddha. I means I should have complete faith that that result is going to me, going to meet my requirement and you follow exactly the procedure as outlined without any compromise as the priest dictates. Then only you get the result. So the, now we are coming to a, a, a religious spiritual person. You become a spiritual when says pariksha lokan karma chitan brahmano nirveda maya nascha krita krutena tad vijnan artham saguru meva avigat ched samit panihi sotriyam brahmanishtam so scripture says after examining what i have getting every time i am doing this i want that i do it i got that and then i am still unhappy so if i keep on doing it for every karma karma being finite result is going to be finite and therefore my enjoyment is also finite because it's finite gives you only finite but what i want is everlasting happiness but it's not there in the crosses therefore the one who is performing a yajna see examine yourself this is pariksha lokan pariksha means examination after examining that this any action does not give me what i want so pariksha lokan karma chita and brahmana brahmana means the one who is inquiring it says this none of these activities is not going is not giving me a permanent eternal happiness so karma chita and brahmano nirveda maya nascha kruta krutena by krutaha that i cannot get by any action i am not going to get that eternal unlimited happiness because it's not there finite gives you only finite finite does not give you infinite so finite plus finite is only finite. 
you can never reach infinity by adding finites. So therefore, what should I do? I want to be eternally happy. That means infiniteness I have to reach, but you cannot reach infinite. As someone said in the, in the if you go to how to succeed or success, he says infinite is your limit, but you cannot reach there. So what good is that? For that, scripture says, is tat vijnanartham sa gurum eva abhigatsed. In order to know how to reach that or how to gain that which cannot be gained by any other way, you have to know, you have to approach a teacher. That is the recipe given by the scriptures. And therefore now you are coming from a, a religious to spiritual, moving from the karma kanda to jnana kanda. And that is essentially a requirement and for that you have to go to a teacher. So, tad vijnanartam sa gurum eva abhigatse samit panihi sotriyam brahmanishtam. So, here the qualifications of the student is given. You have to approach a teacher. Teacher doesn't come and do tom tom, I will take you there. That's not a right teacher. So we, you know, in, in states, you don't see here in, uh, in India, but in states people knock the door and these uh, Christian missionaries send the people with the, with the Bible, with all neatly dressed and all that. So all young kids come and says, says uh, do you believe in Christ, Jehovah witness and all that. And if you believe and then he start distributing the religion. So they come and teach you, says, you, you have to believe in this to go to heaven and all that, otherwise you go to hell. Yes, so you have to be saved. In order to save, you have to follow this religion only. That's why they come around. Whereas, uh, suppose I am a scientist and I know, I know the, the law of gravitation and all that. I don't go to uh, every house and say, Sir, will you believe in gravitational force? Otherwise you go to hell. Or you for that to know the gravitational force, you have to follow my procedure. I don't have to do that. If you are interested, come to me. I will teach you the gravitational force, how to how to know science, how to get the knowledge. For knowledge, I don't have to go and knock the door. Hey, you want you need this knowledge, you need this knowledge. And you, unless you need it, you will approach a proper teacher to know. So tad vijnan artam sa gurum eva abhigatse. So scripture is very, very specific. You have to approach a teacher, number one. You have to approach teacher alone. Guru Eva means that alone, not anybody else. And what kind of teacher? Sotriyam Brahmanishtam. These are the qualifications of the teacher. And how should you approach? Samit Pani. So this is, this is a teaching to a Vedic student who doesn't have anything else. He is a brahmachari, he, is a, he doesn't have. So what can he, you take something to the teacher to offer something. You should not get something free. So you have to serve the teacher. What should I serve the teacher? He is sitting in Himalayas and somewhere in, in the uh, hut and all the day, he doesn't need much. Say so Samit Pani, he needs at least firewood. So take some firewood, collect some firewood and take that. So you have to take what he needs, not the fire. Nowadays you don't need a firewood, you need to take something what he needs. So what do you need? Nowadays teacher, we don't have that Gurukula system. Their Gurukula system was supported by the kings. Now we call it secular and the so-called Indian secular means they support all other religions except Hinduism. They take money from the Hinduism because they, all the money, all the temples are under government. They take all that money and distribute to everybody else. This is what so-called secular is. Anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> but this, uh, what is that required? So Swami Chirmayanda used to say, so you don't need to take firewood, but you take a checkbook with you. Why do not the Swami need? Swami doesn't need any money. But Swami uses for the betterment for the for the Gurukula to establish or the, for the mission centers where the teaching can go on. That's why he establishes some deepanis where the student can go and learn. And there are several places in all over India and where the teaching is going on. Not only India now, even in Trinidad and other places, there is a systematic, consistent teaching going on 
for those who approach the teacher and that is a the methodology is recommended the second one is sotriyam the one we have to approach a teacher who knows the shastra there is no point in so if i want to know chemistry there is no point in going to somebody who doesn't know chemistry obviously i have to approach a teacher who knows chemistry if i want to know how to play tennis i should go, go to one who is expert in tennis so why do i need a teacher i can read i can read and learn i want to know how to swim so why do i need a teacher read a book of swimming book and go and jump into the into the into the pond you can't learn swim you need a training how to do it how to throw all that a methodology how not to do it what happens if we don't follow proper rules and all that are do's and don'ts are being prescribed by the coach or by the teacher if i need a teacher for all those things for this which is most subtlest i need definitely a teacher who knows ins and outs also so sotriyam who knows the scriptures and brahmanishtam who himself has been established in the knowledge also so first i need to know he knows the scriptures how did he know his scriptures he himself studied scriptures under a competent teacher by approaching a teacher and his teacher had learned by approaching his teacher so not only he learned scriptures he learned also how to teach also and all the way to the teach so methodology of teaching and that's called sampradayam a systematic methodology because they knows what happens to the different types of objections have been raised and why this is right why that is not right because this is a knowledge knowledge involves crystal clear understanding without any doubts therefore you need an appropriate teacher who has been himself trained in the direction who can guide you and shows you this is what the scripture says it's not i am not the authority my experience doesn't count what is this is scriptural one which i endorse it what the scripture says is indeed true and therefore i am teaching so sotriyam brahmanishtam means who abiding in the knowledge i cannot test somebody is brahmanishta or not therefore what should i do but scripture says approach a teacher who is sotriya and brahmanishta for that i have to assume that my teacher knows scriptures and therefore he is a brahmanishta whether he is or not is immaterial but my assumption is i have to take it granted that means i have a shraddha in his teaching if he knows how to teach that is enough for me so that i can evolve myself that should be approach so one who can examine and approach a teacher now he becomes a religious spiritual seeker or spiritual who wants to succeed now so success now for him is transferred not from the materialistic point from from the action to knowledge base and that to a subtlest knowledge and we will discuss next why we need to have a, a vedantic teacher and vedanta as a means for which our spirituality can unfold itself that we will do in the next talk with this we stop here om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya पूर्णमेवशिष्यते ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं